Today we're gonna talk about gems, how to get them and how to spend them. Let's start with how to get them. There are many sources for gems. The easiest and most frequent one you will get is from farming the bosses. So you simply kill a world boss and he drops gems. And there we go. Here you can see the gem. If you want to farm gems, the normal version of the bosses is the best one to do it, as they cost the least keys. But to get the world bosses dropping gems, you have to reach world 2, and then you have to buy this upgrade. World bosses can now drop gems, 7% gem drop rate per purchase. This one is pretty important, but I will not say it's priority 1. You really only need one point in it just to activate the chance. Same with the obols, but that's another video. The best way to get gems used to be to farm this guy here. King Dude, you simply drop this golden eye. Then you enter here. Then you use your dutophone. Then he comes out. Then he's grumpy. And then he dies. Then every time you kill him, he drops nine gems. This used to be a lot more, but now it is nine. Maybe it will change in the future. Who knows? Then you can simply redo it. Use your dutophone again. There we go, another nine gems. So that's an easy way to farm gems. I highly recommend that you buy this silver antique every day. You can only buy one per day. You buy the eye from the encroaching forest villas shop NPC, and it restocks once per day. And this is the recipe. Gold bar and ghost, then an eye. And then you get nine gems. Here you can see a giant monster. They are a lot stronger than the normal ones, and they drop a lot more items. They can also drop gems and uh, candy you can see my booby doesn't even scratch it i was gonna say but can you please go down here and focus on it maybe yeah there we go this h bar is barely moving and well there it goes you can see we got gems candy we got four gems you can see the giant mob odds it goes up every time you kill a giant to be able to get a giant you need to have this Tachyon of the Titans, prayer active. You can check here in the AFK info if you have the prayer active or not. And that's about it for the giants. If you go here to World 2 Colosseum, there is a mini boss in here. Doing Colosseums is another way to get gems, but it's very inefficient. The chest can drop gems and some of the bosses can as well. You can spawn big hours on your own. By taking some googly eyes to the mimic zone and dropping them next to that hourglass we saw before we entered you can see here biggie hours has a chance to drop gems but if we look at baba yaga she does not oh man this fire thing is really bad during a coliseum you run so slowly and then there's king dude of course and we have biggie hours and he drops some gems just like that we got four gems Let's see if we can get any gems from this. Oh, we did. And there we go. Now we have seven gems. That is not very efficient gem farming, but it all adds up. We can get gems from the post office, but as you can see, we did not have any luck here. Let's see if we can get anything. I guess we will not. But I'm pretty sure you can get some gems from this, but it's very small amount, like one. But here in the arcade, you have a pretty big chance to get gems. I used up like 700 balls before and I got 300 gems. But you can see you can get 2000 if you land on the blue, 250 from the red, 50 from the purple, 16 from the gold, 4 from the silver, 1 from the bronze, and nothing from the... Not even sure what this is supposed to be. You can simply launch a ball like this. The first item is a portal. Okay. And we have a second portal. Come on, give me something good. Oh, why did you fall back into the bronze zone? We have a golden portal. It lands in the silver. But here in the alchemy, here is a guaranteed way to get gems. You can buy gems by spending this water that you get for free. One gem, perfect for buying things in a gem shop. Two gems, that's two steps closer to buying everything in a gem shop. So we got six gems from that. There was one more thing here in the alchemy, the level up gift. Whenever you level up anything, 60% chance to drop a gift. It could be an XP balloon, a gem for the gem shop or something crazy weird. Let's try to level up shopping a bit. See if we can get anything. 
Oh, we got some gems. Some more gems. More birthday books. And yeah, we got three gems. And we got some potions and gems and statues. More books. So that is pretty much how the level up gift works. It's very good to have on your new characters as they level up. But eventually you will get a bigger reward by having a proper bubble. I'm using Hammer Hammer and Call Me Bob on most of mine. And the XP bubble on a few. Call Me Pope could also be used instead of the Bob one if you care about power defense. Anyway, that's it for the level up gift. And if you talk with any of these guys, Grassland Gary and the World 2 and World 3 version or World 4 version, you can go here to recipe unlocks. This is where you can unlock special, well, not really special, but improved version of old gear. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see you can actually unlock gems here. You get 50 gems, 70, 70, 5, and 5. You get pretty stingy here at the end. And there might be more in the Anvil tab 4. I haven't unlocked that one yet. And you get this point by doing the dailies here, mainly. But also the permanent missions here. You can see you get 8 points if you do this one. And here if you do this daily, you get 6 points. And if you do this permanent one, you get 30. And I can unlock 173 items with the points I have saved up. If you go back to the Grassland Gary and these Merit Task guys, you can see there is an achievement button. And here you can also get gems. You can see the reward for everything. Most of the gems ones, if not all of them, are Steam exclusive. I am playing on Steam, so whenever I complete one of these, I get gems. It will simply fill the screen. Because here, if you meet the dev, you get 40 gems. If you keep the oil, you get 10 gems. If you meet meal, you get 25. If you make your fourth character, you get 16 gems. Reach level 60, 16. Reach world 3, 25 gems. Reach world 4, and, and you get some gems and candy. No longer saying the exact amount. Here you get 50 gems if you trash a total of 2,500 pets. I have 852. Here's the maestro. He has a special skill. Well, actually, it's the journeyman that has it. It's your birthday. Drop some random reward. Has a 26% chance to have new cooldown. And you can get all kinds of stuff from this, including gems. You simply click it like this. And bam! You get some gems. Well, you may get some gems. That was actually pretty damn lucky. At my current skill level, it has a 26% chance to have new cooldown. We did not trigger that, but we did get gems, so it's fine. That's it for the maestro skill. It's technically journeyman, but if you have a journeyman, he will most likely become a maestro, so yeah. Then we have the guild boxes. Guild gift box. Hold down to open. Contains a random cool kid item like gems, exp balloon, or even time candy. Also one in every 500 gifts contain the ultra unboxer trophy, which is the one I'm wearing right now. So let's open one box, see what we get. We got a balloon. Oh, gems, stone, balloon, gem, balloon, fragment, stone, gem, gem, stone, candy, gem, fragment, candy, gem, 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 stone, and fragment. 288. Gem. Then there are two new mini bosses came recently. One in World 3 here at the refrigeration station, and one in the Spaceway Raceway in World 4. You can see the rare drop for Muted and Mush has a chance to drop gems. Well, actually, a guaranteed chance to drop gems. And the same thing for the Dilapidated Slush 100% chance to get gems if you get the rare drop which you usually do. But anyway, this is how you spawn the mushroom. Simply drop some toxic sludge here. And the mushrooms will come alive. And they drop a bunch of stuff, including gems, but mostly the cooking ladles. And if we go here to world three, drop this bucket of snow slush thing. And then we get a lot of gems and other stuff again. So that's how you spawn and kill those two mini bosses. I recommend you spawn them once every seven days. If you kill them at the same time, you can check with the mushrooms. If you have two mushrooms, then it's okay to kill them because it's easier to see on the mushroom 
compared to the snow pile. It simply grows bigger and bigger. One of the best ways to get gems for free without much effort is to type this into the chat. If you allow me, let me go. Then every hour, every zero zero, this game starts, the spike trap surprise. But you can only do this game once per day. But here you have a chance to get 40 gems. And 40 gems per day is not bad at all. And here we go. Now the question is, how long will we survive? Let's try this usual spot. Oh, goodbye. And that surely makes your day better. Wow, we survived again. I think we found a magical spot here. I was gonna move, but it seems we... Yeah, I guess I should have moved. And we got a few gems, six gems. And that's how the spike winning game works. If you go back, you can see it says come back tomorrow. And the next game starts in 58 minutes. You have to be here on time. Yeah, that's about it for the spike mini game. And then of course there's a gem shop that is the fastest and most efficient way to get the gems. Right now we have the gift mass bundle that was supposed to never return. But now it has returned and it's pretty damn good. I would say this is the best bundle in the game ever. You get the snooze hats and a big pile of gems and 250 gift boxes. But then you can also buy a mountain of gems. This bundle rotates depending on if you have bought it or not. So people that already bought the gift mass bundle will see something else here. You can only buy each bundle once. Then of course we have the quest. There are so many quests that give you gems that I can't mention all of them. Because here rhyming is key. Gives you 8 gems. There's a lot more than that but I have completed uh, 163 quests already. So let's see what's inside here. Here we get 25 gems if you kill 30 boobs, pretty easy quest. Here we get two gems, here we get three gems, and so on. So your main sources are bosses, mostly the world bosses, and of course the mini bosses. Your alchemy is a guaranteed source of gems, they will never run out. Of course, instead you will run out of water, so you can't buy too many. I buy one or two of these per day, and one or two here as well depending on what I need. Maybe some days I need a lot of the water, then I only buy one. And here's the Tachyon of the Titans. I recommend that all your characters have this active. There is rarely a reason not to. If you get a giant at boobs, you get a lot more bone meal from that kill. And you need the bone meal to get these Death Wish rings. And they are pretty damn good for a long time in the game. I have uh, replaced them with the Midnight Stopwatch for now, but that's mainly because I'm not killing any bosses. If I need a boss damage, I can just change to these guys. There are a few out of game sources to get gems. This is Lava Flame's Twitter account. And he sometimes have Twitter contests. They are usually pretty simple, just retweet and follow and stuff like that. This one is from December 2020. Seven people get 5,000 gems. This one is for other skilling from 2019. That's his other game. And then we have another Eidolon, one person who comments, give me a gem now, will win 4,000. And this guy does not want his handouts. Out of this world pack giveaway. I actually won this pack. That's why I have the wings on my main character. So hey, proof that it actually works. And I didn't win because I have a YouTube channel or anything like that. In fact, that is probably a negative. I won because, well, I got lucky. And here are a few extra things you could win. And here are a few people that won the summer pack. The summer bundle rather. And yeah, that's about it for Twitter. I don't really use Twitter, so this is what it is. There is not only Twitter contests, there is also Discord contest. Well, Discord is actually the main focus. Here you can see a bunch of people won 7,000 gems from contest 46. In contest 45, a bunch of people won 3,500. And here is me. I actually won uh, contest 44. By getting my viewers to type in my best friend is pick an axe. That was pretty funny. And Matagui did it. Then we have contest 42. Bunch of people won and so on. Contest 41. And lots of people won stuff here. Contest 43. Contest 42. This was actually a Reddit contest. Reddit memes. But yeah, lots of contest. This was an art contest. Pretty interesting to look at. This was the big winner. Hong Kong. This was number two. Amarok, another Amarok, 
mushroom. Oh, poor mushroom, don't cry. Then we have a real item in the real world. Put your glass on the glass. Oh, interesting. Funny Lucky has stopped being a moderator. He was the most famous mod. You can see here he used to post here in this channel here. Lava Flame and Funny Lucky posting. But now he's just a normal member. Dedicated Ram. Hmm. Oh well. I don't think he got paid or anything like that. So hey. This is a pretty cool contest. Lava made some real life items here. I wish I had won this. Would be great to make a video on it. But oh well. And yeah. That's about it. There's a pretty low chance to win because there are so many, you know, competing. It does have a YouTube channel as well. Not sure if there are any contests in here. You can check it out. Anyway, that's it for Discord. Anyway, that's all the sources I can think of right now. Let's look at all the things you will spend your gems at. Let's do them world by world. Infinity Hammer. This one is really good. It simply lets you produce one extra item in the anvil. Eventually you will get a bubble in the alchemy that lets you produce an extra item for free. So with this you get three items. Pretty cheap and I highly recommend it because you will always need anvil items. This one is not really worth buying until you reach the end game with the really hard ores to mine. But even then eventually you will get so much ores that you don't really care about it. I bought one just to change the appearance but yeah, not really that high priority. But they are very cheap so it's up to you. These are not worth buying. These are special versions of the color cauldrons. Two extra players, 1.5 faster brewing and 1.5 higher new bubble chance. Since you have to buy these four times to get them all it's very low priority. I did buy them but that was like when world 4 came out or just before it or something like that. And that was mainly just because you know I wanted to. I had nothing else to buy really. But these are pretty damn good. The bleach liquid cauldrons. You have to buy these in order and you use the water all the time. You use the water on a lot more things than the colored bubbles. It's used for upgrading all the bubbles that you have unlocked and the vials and use it in the shop. And yeah, I recommend you buy one of these at least because the first water is the one that you will use the most, at least for a long time. Obol storage, pretty useless. I haven't bought any yet. It's mainly if you are min maxer that has different obol builds, like you have an entire crafting build and then an entire DPS build and a looting build and stuff like that. Quality obol stack, it's gambling, don't buy it. Marvelous obol stack, it's gambling, don't buy it. Sigil supercharge, 20% sigil XP gain, not really worth doing. Sigils are pretty small bonuses and well, over time they will all be unlocked. And world 3 crystal 3d printer it's very very good it pretty much doubles your printing it's pretty expensive but very very important and here are the sample spaces this is more of a convenience feature it allows you to save more samples so you don't have to go back i think one or two is good to have burning bad books this is only the minimum level of the books that you get from the talent book library by five each time you buy it. I repeat only the minimum level. So this reduces the RNG, but it doesn't increase the max. So I have not bought any more prayers. I have not bought any of these. I don't really use prayers a lot. It depends on your playstyle. Send cogs, premium cogs. Mm, I think they used to be a lot better. Now I would say you don't really have to buy these. Cog inventory, not really worth buying. It's really cheap, but yeah. It's mainly if you are an ultra min maxer that has different sets for everything. Tower building slots. Pretty sure you can build anything in these tower building slots. So it's just an extra building slot really. And flaggies. Eventually this thing will be useless. But if you don't buy it, it's going to take a really long time. I have still not unlocked all of them. And here we have world 4. We can only guess about the future of the, you know, breeding and the cooking. Will we get new food or not? And new pets for every world? If we get new pets for every world, this royal egg cap will be really useful. Increase the max number of eggs you can store and also 1.10x new pet breeding chance. I'm guessing that's 10%. I bought all of these because I don't like doing the splicing. So I wanted that new pet breeding chance. And here is the Richer Link Kitchen. Three times meal cooking speed, two times new recipe speed, and 40% cheaper upgrade cost. Pretty damn useful. Do know that they're only your first and second kitchen that will do the majority of your, you know, cooking. So you don't need all of these. And you're not going to have all the kitchen for a long time. So just buy them as you need them. And there we have the console ship. This is pure gambling. I haven't bought any of them yet. 
gives you a random console ship. There are 22 ships in the game, so you have one in 22 chance of getting the one you want. And yes, you can get the same one again and again and again. But here are the jewels. You also get a random jewel. You cannot get duplicates here. This one is actually worth buying. I bought pretty much all the jewels from the gem shop. You can get all the jewels and ships for free. If you just wait, you get one jewel each week and two ships, I think. And then we have the souped up tube. Each time you buy it, you get two lab tubes and the characters inside get two times lab XP gain and 30% line width. I only bought four out of five because I will never have all the players inside the lab. So there's no point buying 10 spots for my 10 characters. There's pet storage. You don't need this unless you're some crazy min max or that has full teams saved and some fence charge slots. This is pretty useful, but especially for me, because I'm mainly getting my pets from the breedability. I'm not using any splicing. And breedability is a slow but passive way to increase the chances you have. And then we have carton of eggs. 3 to 12 eggs. I have never bought this and probably never will. Then we have premium stones, 5 stats. You can only use it on premium equipment. I have not upgraded any of my premium equipment because I'm not sure what stone I want to use on them. You can refund it for 30. So you don't really have to be that afraid. I assume you get the stones back to refund all premium stones used on it. Hmm. Anyway, let's look at the juiceables. Here you can buy candy, not really worth talking about. And here you can buy inventory and storage and carry capacity and maybe a food slot. You get some food slots for free, so this is a very low priority buy. It's mainly if you want to carry some extra potions maybe, but you are going to need all the backpack space. Well, you're going to need all the storage spaces. For sure. The game is designed that you buy these over time. Each time you buy it, you get nine storage chest slots. But the backpack space is not as needed. I highly recommend you buy a few at least because you can increase your stack size by crafting new bags or by buying a few of these. That means you can store a lot more in your backpack without having more slots. But yeah, priority one is the storage chest. I have bought one daily teleport. You get a few daily teleports for free in game, but I think your max total that you can save goes up if you buy this here. Then the daily mini game plays. I have not bought any of these. I highly recommend you don't do this because mini games are super tedious to play. They may be fun at first, but then you realize you have to play them every day. Otherwise you are wasting this. And talent reset, uh, never buy this. Star talent reset, never buy this. Subclass swap token going from barbarian to squire. However, you can't change between warrior, archer, or mage, or change your elite classes like Blood Berserker. So yeah, it's only the barbarian, squire, or shaman, and uh, wizard, and so on. I have never bought any of these. You get so many characters, so you have to mess up really badly to buy one of these. Pandora's Office Box. Resets all your post office upgrade and refunds all boxes spent. I have never bought one of these. You get more and more boxes each day, so you can simply start upgrading something else if you realize that you messed up not really worth 250 gems cards this is pure gambling i will never buy any of these however the extra card slots is really good and it's highly recommended but don't buy them until you need to like when you have four good cards and then get another fifth good card then you can buy one extra card slot and so on oh wow card presets i didn't know this was in the shop you have two card presets as a start this would be pretty useful for certain characters, like you have a AFK fighting build, a skilling build, but then sometimes you need a dungeon build or a tower defense build or a money build and so on. However, the bad part is that if you log out to the game or you change your device, all the card presets will be wiped. So then you have to redo them all again. So yeah, four star cardifier. Use this on a three star card to upgrade it to a four stars. It is unknown if four star is the max. I mean, in the future, it's the current max, but who knows? You can simply grind this out for free by playing the game. It's mainly if you get the troll card from a card pack, because that one is not in the game yet. Other than that, the bonus going from a three star to a four star is pretty small. So not really worth the 290 gems. Dungeon card pack, galaxy card pack, eternal card pack, ancient card pack and newbie card pack yeah this is pure gambling like i said not really worth buying holy shit 600 gems for an outdated world 3 stuff hmm. i guess it's the bosses of nightmares that's bringing up the price 
goods and services, arcade balls, waste of money. This is just gambling, so not really worth doing. Weekly dungeon booster, mm, maybe. Before happy hour, doing dungeons was super tedious. I have like 300 saved up without buying any of these. But now you can spend 20 for one run, or even 40 if you have a certain prayer. So it depends how much you like the dungeon. I don't like it, so yeah. Zero out of 11. Then you can buy some uh, keychains. I highly recommend that you do not do that. Then we have the hats. Strawbiggy, Top Cap, Dairy Dunk, the classic Green Beanie, and the Diamond Demon Horns. Then you have the hat Premium Fire. Turns any normal hat into a premium hat. This will erase all stats and give it a plus one all stat and five premium upgrade slots. So you can't premium fire a grandma hat for the bonus XP and then thinking you're gonna upgrade it with premium stones. No, that bonus XP will get wiped. And then there is an invisible hat. So this is a premium hat that's invisible, but you can upgrade it with the premium upgrade stones. But your normal hat will show up because otherwise a premium hat always overrides a normal hat. And then you have chat rings, simply gives you different text and some symbols at the edges. Hearts, leaves, bandit bob, bubbles, strange aliens, gold and honkers. I have the default chat, mainly if you want some fun. Oh, you can buy this one and uh, maybe Goldrick will talk to you. And I think that's it for the gem shop. This is the best bundle in the game, but it was supposed to be a one-time deal. So hey, if you haven't bought it, maybe pick it up. I'm not sure I'm gonna pick it up or not. We shall see. And I think that's it for the gems. I really hope I have not forgotten anything. But if I do, I guess someone will shout at me in the comments. So yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.